Hi, and welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. If you'd like to read along with this video blog, uh, it's at tenthdimension.com slash blog. Today's entry is dated March 18th, 2008, and it's called Dark Matter, Dark Energy, Dark Information. It goes like this. 96% of our universe is invisible and undetectable. Isn't that astonishing? According to the experts, it breaks down like this. 4% is the energy and matter that creates our perceived universe. 22% is dark matter, and 74% is dark energy. How can it be that our universe, as unimaginably huge and ancient as it is, can only be four one-hundredths of what's really creating the reality we're in? This is a very, very large elephant in the room for modern science. A number of articles have been published recently suggesting that the Large Hadron Collider, which goes online uh, in later this year, could reveal some new insight into why most of our universe is missing. Some suggest that the LHC's ultra-high energy conditions could even reveal information about the extra dimensions. What if both turn out to be correct? What if, as I've been saying, dark energy and dark matter turn out to be the proof that higher dimensions really do exist and are not just mathematical constructs existing solely in the minds of theorists. I'd like to quote from Dr. Hong Sheng Zhao of the University of St. Andrews School of Physics and Astronomy, who is commenting on his recent papers published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters and Physics Review. He said, No matter what dark matter and dark energy are, these two phenomena are likely not independent of each other. Now, gravity is a bending of space-time. Gravity is the only force that exists or that exerts itself across the extra dimensions. Gavin Gjorbrand described gravity as coming from the grouping order of our universe. Randall and Sundrum suggest that gravity is a localized effect and that in other regions of the higher dimensions, gravity would have completely different values and create other universes completely different from our own. I believe these are all ideas that tie into my ways of visualizing how our reality is constructed. When quantum computing expert Seth Lloyd asks us to think of the Big Bang as being the very first binary yes-no, his ideas relate strongly to Gjorbrand's idea of grouping order, that out of all the possible states, a fluctuation creates the initial conditions and a particular universe is born. Other universes with different basic physical laws would be born out of different initial conditions, different groupings, all of which exist as potential. What does this have to do with dark matter and dark energy? Gravity. Gravity, when exerted from the dimensions above the fifth, can become a repulsive force. Think of a first dimensional line. Think of the third dimension. And you can imagine how an attractive force from the third dimension would appear to be pulling that first dimension from every side. But the attractive force of gravity, for us, comes from the fifth dimension. When 4D space-time is bent, what is it bent or being bent through? The fifth dimension, where Kaluza proved that the field equations of gravity and light are united. In the biggest picture of all, information equals reality. Type those three words into Google and you'll uh, find some interesting comments about that. The mystery that confronts science is that we can't see where the dark matter that has kept our universe from flying apart too quickly and the dark energy that now causes our universe's expansion to accelerate are coming from. I believe that's because they come from the dimensions above space-time and that thinking of those highest dimensions as being weighted towards the information side of the information reality equation makes it easier for us to imagine how this could be true. That's all for today's video blog entry. My name is Rob Bryanson from Imagining the Tenth Dimension. Enjoy the journey.